The Lift & Co. Cannabis Expo returns to the Metro Toronto Convention Center November 18th to the 21st. Discover and learn about all things cannabis. Get your tickets at liftexpo.ca. Must be 19 plus to enter and attend. Yeah, so um, if you use cannabis uh, in a dietary fashion, um, and in my mind as a dietary essential, then you'll never need to turn to cannabis as medicine because its potency of prevention is is just remarkable. And so, uh, you know, use cannabis in your diet, and then you can uh, forego, you know, learning about how to use it uh, for as a medicine to restore your health because you prevent the disease rather than treat it. Welcome to the Miracle Plant Podcast, the show that inspires, promotes, and gives you a daily dose of inspiration from the people who have used cannabis to change their lives in extraordinary ways. Here's your host, Justin Benton. Welcome back to the Miracle Plant Podcast, where we discuss this miracle plant with so many names and how it's helping people in so many extraordinary ways. Today, we are having a very, very special episode. For those of you that have followed my journey and our journey in 101 CBD and 101 Hemp and the Miracle Plant Podcast, you know this man's name. Dr. William Courtney is the leading researcher in raw cannabis around the world. I found his research back in 2011 uh, when he was using this miracle plant, juicing this miracle, miracle plant to help people with late stage four and stage five cancer. We do have the unique honor of being able to track him down in the Caribbean. He's deep in the rainforest. And uh, he's gonna join us now on this incredible topic of cancer, his research that he's done um, using raw cannabis and really explaining it. I can see how this interview is going to save people's lives because they're going to be able to truly understand how this plant helps fight cancer cells. This is something that can make, you know, speak to your head and speak to your heart, speak to your doctors. Um, And uh, he's certainly willing to come back again and expound more of his research and knowledge that he has specifically on raw cannabis like CBDA and how it helps beat cancer. So sit back, listen, get your pen out. You're going to probably have to listen to this a few times because there's so much information in this little 10 minute part, part of our interview. Uh, we're going to have a little Q&A on the back end and, and talk a little bit about it. But uh, with uh, no further ado, let's listen to our interview with Dr. William Courtney. Dr. William Courtney, back from the Caribbean. How are we doing, Dr. Courtney? We are doing fantastic. Uh, last time we talked, we talked about some exciting revelations about hemp sprouts and how anybody can be a hemp farmer, whether they're on the 57th story in New York City or if they're in a little town in Iowa. And so that was really exciting. And we've started some testing at, at looking at different stages, 10 through 14, when the plant really starts to grow and, and produce exciting things. So that's a fun thing that, that we definitely look forward to continuing and implementing. You said something that was profound, and I wanted to make sure I got the quote right because uh, I'll be getting that out there in, in the social media sphere. Uh, you, I believe you said, eat the plant um, and you won't need to use it as medicine. So I'll let you quote it the way you want to quote it, but I thought that was profound. Yeah, so um, if you use cannabis uh, in a dietary fashion, um, and in my mind as a dietary essential, then you'll never need to turn to cannabis as medicine because its potency of prevention is is just remarkable. And so, uh, you know, Use cannabis in your diet, and then you can uh, forego, you know, learning about how to use it uh, for as a medicine to restore your health because you prevent the disease rather than treat it. Absolutely. Well, you and I are directly on the same page, and I can remember when I first read the page. Uh, I want to say it was back in 2011 when we were on our journey to clear the fog for my son. Uh, I came across your name, your research. And you were the first that I had ever seen that was showing actual case studies of people 
using raw cannabis to help them with late stage four, stage five cancer. I would love for you to share with my audience and everyone who's listening a little bit more about that research because that's really what was the light bulb for us that really made it all click when we were trying to understand this plant and get that fog cleared for my son. One important aspect, which kind of is an example of probably many similar activities going on is the uh, antigen presenting cell, which is one of, the, one of the white blood cells. I, I believe it's a macrophage, so it's a large white blood cell. Um, and w what its task is, is to kind of monitor what's moving through the circulatory system, monitor what's going on in, in the tissues. And they're looking for um, any aberration, any alteration, any change of cell structure and function. So if, if this antigen presenting cell sees a cell that is beginning to be dis, a dysplastic cell, a cell whose structure is um, visibly altered from a normal cell. And dysplasia is an intermediate step if it progresses over time, like if, if you continue to inflame the lower esophagus with gastric acidity, you know, the, the inflammation there will eventually progress onto maybe, um, uh, you know, an esophageal cancer. But the, uh, this, the immune system, the white blood cells, and particularly the antigen presenting cells, are monitoring uh, for dysfunctional changes. And their job is to grab them quickly. Because if, if they can get a dysplastic cell, identify it as abnormal, they, they will bite off the antigenic marker on that abnormal cell. It's like a, it's like a biochemical address. And then they will, they will migrate with that address to the local lymph node system and then present this, uh, this particular cell type address for destruction and removal by the entirety of the, uh, of the immune system. And so the, the, the lymph node will, will take in, okay, uh, we've been told that this address there is problematic, needs to be removed. And then they'll send out um, antibodies and, and white blood cells um, that will go out. The antibodies will attach to that marker, identifying the cell, and then other white blood cells will come in, rupture the nuclear membrane in a process called aptosis, uh, killing the cell, and then they'll evacuate the abnormal cell contents, um, and the cell will just kind of disappear. And I've, I've seen that on... Um, you know, uh, kind of MRI imaging following cells. And, you know, here's this very bright, white, very solid tumor. Um, and then when the immune system begins to dissemble that tumor, it just gets less bright white and, you know, over a period of a week, two weeks, and then it, it can progress on for, for months. Um, the tumor will just get uh, less bright, less bright, and eventually become gray, and eventually the, 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 it'll just no longer be visible. And that is the, the process of you know, uh, the immune system having been um, activated by the antigen presenting cell to say, you know, whatever's going on in that bulging node of growth over there, we, you know, I want that stopped and removed from the body. And the fact that all these parts and pieces are in place um, and in particular, the issue relevant to a, a cannabis discussion is that the, the, the maturation, the, the conversion from quiescent to um, active. You know, so here's this quiescent cell monitoring things, and all of a sudden it goes, oh, no, there's something I need to do. It, it, it's, its maturation is under the cannabinoid control. So the endogenous cannabinoid system is the one that kind of kicks it into operational gear, and cannabis with the exogenous terpenes and cannabinoids comes in and supports and facilitates that conversion from quiescent to active that then activates the immune system that then will go out um, and identify and remove um, all the uh, dysplastic cells before they have progressed onto neo neoplastic. That was one heck of a, mo uh, of a monologue right there, I must say. Quentin Tarantino <laughs> would have been proud of such a monologue. <laughs> the cancer commentary, I'm going to have to listen to 40 times over, and, and we're going to have to get that on billboards everywhere. But uh, I have a, another podcast that I'm jumping on um, later on this afternoon. I'm a guest, 
And he is literally going through brain cancer. He just had found out about it, and he had surgery, and he's going through the traditional way. And I had sent him some products, um, but we I've never had a chance to really explain everything to him. So I look forward to sending him this podcast and saying, yeah. you want science? Push play. Yeah. That was quite impressive. <laughs> I mean, if, yeah, so maybe a shorter phrase is: if you include it in your diet, you will not never need it as a medicine. That that's short and sweet and and to the point because you know it's a, it's a leafy green vegetable. You watch how other animals eat it; they don't dry it and then you know extract it and isolate a single cannabinoid and then you know you know espouse you know the benefits of taking THCV. You know, you look at look at the whole animal kingdom for you know ten thousand years, and it's you know it's just a leafy green vegetable. And because of because of the metabolism of these of the chemistry of cannabis, um, the estimates vary from sixty to ninety out to two hundred and forty days, meaning uh, you stop ingestion, and you know ninety to three months, four months, six months there are residual uh, cannabinoid products still being eliminated from the body. So the body is very tenacious in its grasp and the body will remove these from the serum in, in less than a half an hour, 20, 30 minutes. It pulls all of these valuable molecules out and puts them into any fatty structure depot to kind of store them and then very gradually places them back in so that, you know, you, you end up developing a reserve that can buffer you between you know, time, lean times where, you know, you, you know, for animals wandering around, they may not have water into cannabis every day, but if they get a little bit here and they, then they fill up the reserves, then, then they can go, you know, maybe a couple of days without it. And it, it allows them to kind of support that intracellular environment, the intracrine environment, uh, in a way that is, you know, stunningly remarkable and critical for, the, the prevention of disease. I mean, well, there you go, folks. That was my talk this week with Dr. William Courtney. We actually have a lot more talk and a lot more conversation pieces, but because this one was so powerful, and to you know, just kind of recap for those that uh, are joining, Dr. William Courtney is the first researcher doctor I've ever come across or found that was using raw cannabis to treat late stage four and stage five cancer and having tremendous results. And so when I had the conversation, we were actually gonna talk about COVID and some other things and some other uh, topics. But uh, when we went down that road, I knew how powerful the information was, but that so many people need to hear that need to understand about this raw cannabis plant that, that doctors need to understand, people going through cancer need to understand and know that there is true science out there and there is true results that have happened and so when I heard that in the beginning, uh, I just wanted to cut that interview right short and tight so people could just go right to this podcast and listen to it and uh, hear for themselves the, the, the real um, you know, biochemical reactions that are happening when you consume raw cannabis and the whole plant form and how it is, uh, you know, fights and, and beats cancer cells. So with no further ado, um, just so excited that we were able to bring Dr. William Courtney back to talk about this incredible subject. And, and uh, I know my mom, Janet, on here uh, helped uh, heal and treat her husband uh, of cancer as well. And I wanted to get your initial take of hearing uh, Dr. William Courtney's take. Um, it's always good to learn nuances of how the body works and where the CBDA or the raw cannabinoids fit into the picture. So I really was impressed with that about how he talked about the uh, endo the endogenous cannabinoid system that we talk about a lot uh, helps wake up the cells that need to go and kill the dysplastic, in other words, the misshapen or oddly shaped cells before they turn into cancer cells. Um, and I love the topic he talked about in terms of it's very, if I love that statement, if you eat it in your diet, then you're not going to need it for a medicine and how animals and everybody eat it and the fact that it takes it out of your blood serum and, and stores it so that's there when you need it uh this those little fine details often help people understand more about why they do it and how it works um it was interesting just talking to you this morning so many years ago uh my husband was uh diagnosed with stage four uh cancer with two inoperable tumors between his heart and his lungs 
and so they couldn't do surgery and they uh it was it, they gave him three months to live they said there was nothing they could really do and so then i've always been a natural holistic healer and raised justin holistically and my, my whole family and so then they went to the very basics of like good water not tap water and then really heavy emphasis on juicing and there was already some thoughts about the about cannabis in terms of the form of THC. Nobody really talked about CBD in those days. Um, and so we were growing some in our basement, I admit it, uh, because it is illegal, but it also helps with nausea, which sometimes is uh, there with either treatment or with cancer. And so I was super into juicing. So I put lots of fruits and vegetables in these really old fashioned Acme juicers. And we, so we did toss some in. Uh, just because we put everything green we had in the house in it uh, to help with the cancer. Um, and so a lot was a diet. And I also used some herbs uh, from Brazil, from different places. And he did recover and lived another 23 years. So it was one of my more dramatic uh, cases of someone was cured of, of a life-threatening disease. Uh, but it's fascinating thinking back. We did it more, threw it in there just because of the nausea. And again, I was trying to find anything green. Some of it was during the winter where there weren't a lot of fresh greens around um, in the old days before we brought things in from Bolivia or whatever. Uh, so that, that was really fascinating to me, but it also does show that our bodies respond to what we're eating and then you find something very powerful. So we always know deep greens are healthy and healing, but to find something more powerful uh, and by, by, with the cannabis. And again, too, at that time, we really didn't have any idea. We didn't talk about CBD. And we didn't talk about even THC for any kind of cures. We talked about getting high. And so it's just kind of by luck that we figured that out and, and used it. So again, too, I am fascinated with Dr. William Courtney because I know a lot of the research, but sometimes you just listen to somebody and hear another piece. And I hadn't really thought about the endocrine system. After you eat it, it's sitting there waiting in the fatty tissue deposits, and then it pops out to help activate the white cells to kill cells that are starting to uh, show that they're, they're different or odd or, and can potentially be uh, cancerous. Uh, so anyway, I am very, very impressed with that. And I don't know if he's written any books or not, but I'm certainly going to go out and look and see. Yeah, he's he has a lot of published uh, work. Uh, he's he's a wealth of knowledge uh, on raw cannabis. And like I said, he's the leading researcher in the world. Um, just, in, you know, he's he's been doing it for over 10 years. And, you know, we as a as, as the human race have been using raw cannabis medicinally for at least 3,000, even back as back as far in Oriental medical books to 8,000 years ago. And so, you know, when I try to give him credit like that, he always is just kind of pushes back and says, you know, I'm, you know, we're late to the party about using the whole plant raw cannabis for, um, you know, essential dietary uh, supplementation, uh, but as well as using it as medicine. So it's just so excited that we had an opportunity to get that clip and we're going to have him back more. And I know also on in the same world, um, my mom, who's a you know a holistic healer and has all the credentials in the world as well, uh, also has a place if you want to talk to her one on one off of the podcast. <laughs> you can just go to askjanet.org and uh, set up a Zoom call or a phone call with her in international and. And she's done a lot of amazing things. But this particular episode, again, we're staying real focused and tight on cancer and cannabis. We have a couple people here on Clubhouse that jumped on stage that had a question. And uh, we'll start with Latara. What's going on, Latara? Hi. Good morning, everyone. I, I was there, I believe, when I heard Dr. William Courtney um, speak. And I did want to say... Not, not not a question, but did say when the time does come um, for the people to jump on and speak with him with regard to, you know, treating cancer with cannabis. I definitely want to make sure that I'm on board and invite my auntie um, to be on board because as I was listening to him speak, I, you know, she's one of the main people um, that I have experienced seeing cannabis heal with regards to cannabis. Um, and as a matter of fact, it was November of last year that they told my aunt that she only had about three months to live um, because she got breast cancer, fourth stage, for um, 
And this was the third time of her having a breast cancer diagnosis. And um, we immediately um, started, you know, treating her cancer with cannabis um, and CBD um, and some other herbs as well. And just happy to say that my aunt is still here alive and breathing. So pretty much everything that he said about it, um, you know, with the cells and, you know, getting rid of the tumors and things of that nature, I absolutely can attest that that's true. Um, because we really thought that my aunt was not going to be with us, um, you know, much longer after she was diagnosed. So, um, and she is also taking the alleviate the, uh, 3,200 milligram every day of the 101 CBD. So I know for a fact that this really, you know, helps um, fight cancer. And um, if anyone is struggling with trying to get someone or their sales or a loved one on board with this to treat the cancer, I would re- highly recommend it. I, I, I really would. So it's really hard for me to speak sometimes because I'm trying to speak and not cry because, you know, she she helped raise me. We're really close. And I really thought that my aunt was not going to be here. And so I'm just thanking God for the miracle plan. You know, I'm so happy to be here in the clubhouse with you guys. So happy for this platform. Um, really grateful for um, researchers and um, people that are into cannabis, like Dr. William Courtney and, and all of you that's here, you know, all of us, it's, it's, we're like a family and um, it's, it's, this fight against cancer, like pretty much every day somebody's getting diagnosed with cancer. So, um, but that's all. I don't want to take up too much time, um, but that's what I wanted to say. So please, please keep me informed when it's time, Justin. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Hi, Janet. Absolutely will do. And thanks for coming on stage and sharing your story. And we're so happy uh, and blessed to hear that your aunt's doing better. And, um, you know, it's, it's, that's the reason why we started the Miracle Plant podcast, because, you know, we've, we know, we, you know, those have been on the podcast before, heard the podcast before, know the Tara story, an incredible, powerful story with overcoming MS and her child with autism and epilepsy and how this Miracle Plant uh, helped both of them heal. But is, is, you know, and also um, we just wanted to share these stories with people because we get to hear them, you know, those in our organization get to hear them. We have retail stores and online and all those kinds of things. And we see the emails and we see the testimonials. But um, like I said, this information that we're talking about today should be on billboards, right? And why isn't it on billboards? You know, and I think for those of you that don't know, there are powers that be uh, billionaires and trillion dollar industries that do not see any profit or gain in people healing themselves by growing fruits and vegetables and plants like cannabis in their backyard. And that's just the sad reality of it. So there are people, there are institutions in place that keep this information locked up. But because of all of these stories that are coming out, uh, there was just a recent Gallup poll that showed that 68% of U- uh, U.S. citizens Uh, believe that cannabis should be legal. So uh, the toothpaste, as I say, has been out of the tube and uh, there's no stopping us now. Uh, There's going to be fights ahead. There's always going to be opposition, especially when it's the light versus the dark. So we have this incredible community here on Clubhouse, these incredible platforms like podcasts that Dan at PodConX.com will help produce for you and get your message out and get these stories out. So And uh, I do want to thank everybody for coming on stage. We do have to wrap the podcast up here. Here's what we do that's special at the Miracle Plant Podcast. At the end of every show, we unmute our mics, and I count to three, and we say heal the world. Because of what this Miracle Plant did for my son, um, getting him off the spectrum from severe autism to a healthy, happy kid, uh, we, we took it on as our mission to pay it forward, to educate, to give access to the products, to the seats, the videos, to whatever we could possibly do because there's so much misinformation and there's so much confusion about this miracle plant and we're just here to pay it forward. So on the count of three, we're going to say heal the world because there's people out there that are looking for solutions that are at the last end of their rope and they want something to heal their son, their, their daughter, their mother, their father, their husband themselves. 
And we all know the power of this miracle plant. So in the count of three, let's say heal the world. One. Heal the world. Heal the world. All right, everybody. Woo. Thanks for joining us. The Miracle Plant Podcast. If you like this podcast, review it, share it. Come back next Saturday on Clubhouse 10 a.m. Pacific, and we'll have you on stage. And we're going to talk a lot more with Dr. William Courtney because we've got a lot more coming to talk with that man. Thanks, everybody, for joining, and we'll see you next week at 10 a.m. Take care, everybody.